Welcome everyone. The title of this talk is Rudra, Finding Memory Safety Bugs in Rust at the Ecosystem Scale. I'm Yechan Be from Georgia Tech System Software and Security Lab. Preventing memory safety bugs are critical to the security of system software. Recently, Rust programming language is gaining popularity in systems programming because it promises memory safety without costly runtime checks such as garbage collection. Therefore, many large companies already started adopting Rust in their production code. However, there is an inherent dilemma between the safety and control. Certain operations cannot be handled with safe languages because they are not part of the language runtime. Such operations include memory mapped I.O. and interaction with hardware or the operating systems. As a system programming language, Rust needs to support these cases. To allow these operations, Rust provides an escape hatch called unsafe Rust. Rust is, in fact, consists of two parts, safe Rust and unsafe Rust. When a program is written entirely in safe Rust, the Rust compiler automatically guarantees the memory safety of the program. On the other hand, Rust allows programmers to perform certain low-level operations that are not guaranteed to be safe with unsafe Rust. In this case, the programmer must guarantee the absence of the memory safety box. In other words, memory safety of a Rust program depends on the correctness of all unsafe code it contains. Unsafe Rust can be represented in two ways. First, Unsafe APIs can be directly exposed to users. In this case, the caller is responsible for providing a correct argument, and the caller needs to use the unsafe keyword to call this function. Second, unsafe APIs can be encapsulated in safe APIs. In this case, API designer guarantees that this API never causes safety violation, and the caller can use these APIs just like other safe functions in Rust. We focus on the bugs in the second case. If an encapsulated API does not correctly check the invariant for internal unsafe code, it allows a user of the API to cause memory safety bugs without using unsafe keyword. Such bugs are generally considered as serious bugs because they break the trust boundary between Rust packages. In this talk, we introduced Rudra, a static analyzer for unsafe Rust. The online of talk is as follows. First, we identify three common bug patterns in unsafe Rust by reviewing known unsafe Rust bugs and auditing famous Rust packages. We devised two new algorithms to detect these bugs and formulated them as a static analyzer named Rudra that can scale to the entire Rust ecosystem. So far, Rudra found more than half of the memory safety bugs known to the Rust security advisory database. These bugs are found in code bases written and extensively reviewed by Rust experts. Let me first start by explaining the three bug patterns. Patterns. The three bug patterns we identified are panic safety bug, higher order invariant bug, and sensing variance bug. The first pattern is called panic safety bug, which is caused by an incorrect resource deallocation in compiler inserted invisible code paths. To explain the panic safety bug, I'll first introduce two concepts of Rust. The first concept is ownership. It is similar to resource acquisition is initialization, or RI, in C++. The Rust compiler assigns an owner variable to each value, and the associated resources are automatically reclaimed when the owner variable goes out of scope. The second concept is panic. Panic is used to handle exceptional program status in Rust. When panic happens, the Rust runtime unwinds the call stack and calls the destructors on each live variable. For instance, if the blue line panics, the red lines are not executed, and the Rust compiler calls destructors on live variables A and B. So, the combination of ownership and panic is good for programmers because it liberates programmers from manual resource handling. Unfortunately, ownership and panic becomes a hassle when unsafe Rust is combined together. It is typical for unsafe code to temporarily introduce inconsistent objects, such as duplicating the object ownership or creating an uninitialized object. Of course, such bypass should be fixed up if unsafe code is correctly encapsulated. The problem is that if panic happens in between the ownership bypass and the fixup, the invisible panic pass will run destructors on inconsistent objects, and the fixup routine is not executed. Achieving the panic safety is difficult because the panic handling paths inserted by the compiler are invisible, and for each location, the programmer needs to manually track live variables, which is not a typical workload for Rust programmers. Rudra found the panic safety bug in Vector from Meter API in an AD Tensor package. This is the code example for panic safety bug in AD Tensor package. This API provides a way to initialize the third party vector type. 
it takes an iterator from the user and initializes itself using the elements returned from it. It first creates an uninitialized vector, prepare an iterator, iterates the items to initialize the vector, and finally returns the result. The bug here is that next call on user provided iterator might panic, and if it happens, it calls the destructor on uninitialized self type, potentially leading to calling destructor on arbitrarily initialized memory, leading to memory safety bug. The second bug type is higher order invariant bug. It is caused by unchecked assumptions on user provided higher order values. Recall the access function explained earlier. Access is defined as a safe function, so it must check the index is inbound before using unsafe code. This is a basic invariant check. Then, what does higher order invariant mean? As a high level language, Rust allows programmers to pass not only values, but also custom logic in forms of a type parameter or a closure. For instance, Rust arrays have sort by function, which takes a comparative function from the user and sorts the array based on it. Just like access function needs to check invariance on the index parameter, sort by function also needs to check invariance of compare function, so that no safe comparator function causes a memory safety bug. Unfortunately, guaranteeing the higher order invariant is much more difficult than checking a simple invariant on values. Higher order invariant bugs are difficult because the assumptions internal unsafe code make on user provided logic are implicit. The common examples of such assumptions are assuming that the function call always return the same value, leading to time of check to time of use bugs, or unverified semantic assumptions, such as assuming that the comparator function satisfies the transitivity or associativity. Rudra found a higher order invariant bug in string join function in the standard library. We will come back to this bug later after explaining the last bug pattern. Let me explain the bug with code example. This function takes an array of types that can be converted to a string as the first parameter and a separator string as the second parameter. For instance, if ABC is given as an array and the pipe is given as a separator, it returns a string that contains A pipe B pipe C. It first calculates the result length. Note that the original code has an overflow check which is not represented in the slide. Then, it allocates a string with that size, creates a view to the uninitialized portion. It then copies the array content by alternating the array contents and the separator to the uninitialized area. Finally, it overwrites the length of the string to indicate that it is fully initialized. The bug here is that the contents of the array are converted twice, for the first time during the length calculation, and for the second time during the actual copy. Here, unsafe code assumes that both conversions return the same result. Hence, if the type that is converted to different strings is used, as in the right side of the slide, join function returns a string that contains uninitialized bytes. The last bug pattern is sensing variance bug, which is caused by specifying incorrect condition when manually asserting thread safety of a generic type. Rust thread safety is governed by two traits, send and sync. The send trait is implemented on a type that can be sent across the threads. The sync trait is implemented on a type that can be accessed by different threads in parallel. The Rust compiler automatically implements them for simple types. But complex types such as synchronization primitives like locks require manual assertions of sensing properties with unsafe input. A sensing variance bug happens when a generic type specified incorrect type out on type parameters. If the wrapper type does not specify any condition in the inner type T when implementing send trait, such definition allows non thread safe type to go across the thread boundary through the wrapper type and considered as a bug. To prevent such bugs, manual safety assertions must provide correct bound for type parameters. This makes the wrapper type to be only sent when the inner type T is sent. The basic case is not too difficult, but it becomes very complicated when send and sync are interact with each other. These are some of the rules for send and sync that are extracted from the Rust standard library. Some send rule requires t-sync bound, some sync rule requires t-send bound, some types are neither send nor sync regardless of the inner type, and some type requires both bounds for send and sync. As you can see here, the rule becomes easily complicated, and figuring out the correct rule is not an easy task. Rudra found the send sync variance bug in mapped mutex guard in futures library. Mapped mutex guard takes two type parameters, and it specified correct bound for only one of them. This is the code example for the bug in mapped mutex guard. Future packages mutex follows write pattern. When a mutex is locked, it returns a guard object that automatically unlocks the lock when it goes out of the scope. 
This is an example of creating a mutex and corresponding guard object that contains a vector. Mapped mutex guard acts like a guard, but it provides a view to the mapped value. In this example, mutex guard dereferences to the whole vector while mapped mutex guard dereferences to the first element of the vector. The bug here was that mutex guard only specified condition for the type parameter for the original element t and not for the type parameter for the mapped type u. This definition allows race condition in multi-threaded environment. To summarize, these are the three bugs that we identified as common in unsafe rust. Panic safety bug, higher order invariant bug, and sensing variance bug. Let's go back to the bug example for the higher order invariant bug. This example shows a few challenges to detect such type of bugs. The first difficulty is incomplete definitions. We need to detect bugs in this function without knowing a concrete type T and its corresponding convert implementation. The bug detector must be able to make assumptions on such holes to find bugs in this function. The second difficulty is that some information is not available in later compiler stages. For instance, safe to types are only used at type checking stage and discarded during the compilation. Such information does not exist in the later compiler stages such as LLVM IR. Our solution to these problems is a flow-based heuristics that intermixes IRs at different compiler stages. Rudra works as a custom Rust compiler. It extracts two internal IRs from the original Rust compiler. It uses high-level IR, HIR, to extract code structure such as type and function definitions and the location of unsafe blocks. And it uses mid-level IR, MIR, to extract co code semantics such as call dependencies. Then, Rudra uses these two IRs to detect the three bug patterns. It implements two core algorithms, the unsafe data flow checker and the sensing variance checker. The unsafe data flow checker models six type of ownership bypasses. Then, it uses a coarse-grained data flow analysis to detect panic safety bugs and higher order invariant bugs. It finds the data flow from an ownership bypass to panic locations to detect panic safety bugs and it finds a data flow from an ownership bypass to the location where implicit assumptions are made to detect higher order invariant bugs. In the join example, the unsafe data flow checker detects the safety bypass, marked as blue, and the assumptions on user-provided logic, marked as red. It then detects the data flow from the safety bypass to the user-provided logic and generates a warning based on the observed flow. That's the basic idea of the unsafe data flow checker, and the detail of the algorithm is described in our paper. The next algorithm is a sensing variance checker. It first looks at the user provided bound on the type parameters. Then, it compares it with the inferred bounds from the type definition and associated APIs. In this example, the sensing variance checker looks at the type definition and thinks that t send bound might be needed. Then, it also looks at the associated APIs to infer that T-Sync bound might be needed based on the API signature. If there is any mismatch between the user provided bound and the inferred bound, the sensing variance checker reports a warning. The evaluation result is quite promising. We analyzed all 43k packages unloaded to Rust main package repository and found 264 unknown memory safety bugs throughout the Rust ecosystem. This includes two bugs in the Rust standard library, one bug in the official features package for asynchronous programming, and one design issue in the Rust compiler that misuses send and sync. These are all code bases written and extensively reviewed by Rust experts. This in indicates that bugs found by Rudra are subtle and non-trivial. They also resulted in 112 Rust security advisors and 76 CVEs. They represent more than half of the memory safety bugs known to the Rust Security Advisor database since it started tracking Rust bugs in 2016. As the next step, we compared Rudra with existing approaches. First, we compared Rudra with dynamic analyzers, fuzzers, and MIRI. Fuzzers test programs with randomly mutated inputs to detect bugs. MIRI interprets Rust mid-level IR and can detect certain classes of undefined behaviors during the interpretation. We also compared Rudra with static analyzer named UEF Checker from PLDI 2020. The results show that none of the bugs found by Rudra are detected by this method. This indicates that Rudra can find unique bugs. During the evaluation, Miri found additional bugs that are not covered by Rudra's algorithm, indicating that Miri and Rudra are complementary to each other. 
Although Rudra can find a subtle, non-trivial, and unique box, it has three major limitations. First, Rudra is not exhaustive. The heuristics used by Rudra are not complete. Rudra also uses intra-procedural analysis that will miss box caused by the interaction of multiple APIs. Therefore, the absence of report from Rudra does not guarantee the soundness of a package. Second, it has relatively high false positive rate. We intentionally limited the complexity of the algorithm that Rudra uses to achieve the required scalability. As a trade-off, Rudra incorporates false positives. To alleviate this issue, we provide three precision modes for Rudra so that users can adjust the sensitivity and precision according to their usage. Third, Rudra finds bugs at the definition site. This is both strengths and shortcomings of Rudra. This allows Rudra to proactively prevent bugs, but it does not give information about how much packages are affected or how likely the API is used in a vulnerable way. We believe that this is an interesting future research direction to assess the safety of the Rust ecosystem. So far, that was our research, Rudra, a setting analyzer for unsafe Rust. Thank you very much for listening, and I'd be happy to take any questions.